this video we're going to revisit the idea of composition of functions. So uh, we'll look at them from different uh, perspectives in terms of equations, in terms of graphs, and then also in terms of tables of values. So uh, we have our function f of x in yellow and g of x in green. And on part a we want to find uh, this notation is read as f composed with g of 3. Students oftentimes read it as fog of 3, and it actually means the same thing as f of g of 3. So g of 3, we're going to plug into our function g of x. So we're going to get 3 times 3 minus 5. This is our g of 3. And so that's going to be 9 minus 5 is 4. And that is going to then, <coughs> excuse me, go into our function f. So then we are going to plug the 4 into our f. So that's going to be 4 squared minus 2 times 4. And that's 16 minus 8. And so that's 8. So our f composed with g of 3 is equal to 8. And g of f of 3, we're going to first find f of 3. And so f of 3 means we're going to get... 3 squared minus 2 times 3 is 9 minus 6 is 3. So that becomes g of 3. And then that goes into g. So as we saw before, that is going to be 9 minus 5, which is 4. And f of g of x means now we're going to take all of g of x, that whole 3x minus 5, and plug it into f in place of x. So that means we're going to get the 3x minus 5 squared minus 2 times 3x minus 5. See how we're doing this? We're plugging in the 3x minus 5 in place of the x in our f function. So squaring out the 3x minus 5, remember that's the first one squared, twice the product, plus the second one squared, and then distributing the negative 2 will make that a negative 6 and 6x and then a plus 10. So that will be 9x squared and then a minus 36x and plus 35. That's our new function, f composed with g of x, f of g of x. And g of f of x g composed with f of x means g of f of x. So now we're going to plug all of f into our g function. So that means we're going to go 3 times the x squared minus 2x and then the minus 5. So that'll be a 3x squared minus 6x and the minus 5. Now we'll do the same idea but we'll do it with uh, our functions given as graphs. <coughs> so the first one we can see f is our function in yellow and g is our function in green. So g of f of negative 1 means we have to figure out what is f of negative 1 first. So on the f graph we go to negative 1 and then to the function and we see that its y value is a positive 1. So then we have to go to the g function. Now that 1 is going to be an x value, and that's going to give us a y value of 2. And so that is g of f of negative 1. f of g of 5 means we're going to start by finding g of 5. So on the g function, on the g graph, we go to 5 and then to the function, and read off that y value as 2. That now goes into f as an x value. And uh, we got a problem there. Oh, that's a negative 2. Whew. Because now we can actually do f of negative 2. f of 2 would have been a problem. f of negative 2, it looks like, is 0. And that's going to be our answer. Now we'll do f of f of negative 1. So first we'll take negative 1 to the f function, 
and that's going to be a positive 1. We turn around and plug that right back into the f function, and f of 1 is 0. And there we have it. g of g of 4. First, we're going to go to the g function, to 4, and read off the value on the function. The y value is a negative 1. So then we're going to take g of negative 1, and g of negative 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be 4. <coughs> now these get kind of crazy. <coughs> so here we have a table of values, and we know some values, we don't know others. We know that h, g, and f are related by composition. So h is g of f of x. And using that, we're going to see if we can figure out these missing pieces. So let's see what we get by trying to find h of 1, since there's two things in that row of x equals 1 we don't know. We don't know g and we don't know h. So we know that h of 1 is going to be g of f of 1. On the table, we see that f of 1 is 2. So now we want to find what is g of 2. Well, g of, g of 2, it appears, is 6. So, oops, I lost my pen there. So that means that h of 1 must be 6. So we know that this has to be 6. Now, let's see what we can do about h of 2. So h of 2 is going to be g of f of 2. So f of 2, we go to 2, to the f column, that's 1. So that means we have to find g of 1. We go to the 1, and uh-oh, we don't know what that is. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can figure out what to do with this g of 1. So we're trying to find g of 1, and now we have to get a little bit creative. So what we want to do is figure out uh, f of what, f of what will equal 1. Because if we can find out what value of x will make f equal to 1, then that value of x we can plug into h and then say g of the 1 must equal whatever h of that number is. Does that make sense? So what value of x makes f equal to 1? We look at the f column and see that there are two choices. It looks like f of 0 is 1, and f of 2 is also equal to 1. So... Let's try the 0. We can say h of 0 is going to be g of f of 0. So we said that f of 0 was 1. So that means that g of 1 must be the same as h of 0. And we know that h of 0 is 8. That means that g of 1 must be 8. So g of 1 must be 8. And if g of 1 is 8, then that means that h of 2 is also 8. So they are both going to be 8. This gets kind of tricky in a hurry. <coughs> Let's try another one. Now you got to think about these hard and try to get them because they're really hard to create. So there's not going to be a lot of practice with those. Now, before we get started, though, I can see I made a goof up. So let me, this was actually supposed to be 2. So let me put that in as white. That we actually know. Okay, let's see if we can first find this one right here. So we are trying to find what is w of 0. And from what we're given, that means we want v of u of 0. And we see that u of 0 is equal to 2. And v of 2, we see, is 1. So that means that our w of 0 must be 1. 
Now let's see what we can do with that second row here. So we can see that w of 1 must be 2. That's all we know from that row. But we do know that w of 1 comes from v of u of 1. Now we don't know u of 1 and we don't know v of 1. But if we look at the v column, look at the answers to v, which of those, what does it take to plug into v that will equal the 2? And we can see that v is equal to 2 when x, when our t value is 3. So that means this must be 3. So that tells us that u of 3, I'm sorry, u of 1 must equal 3. And so we can fill in that one right there. Okay. Let's see if we can do a similar strategy to figure out what v of 1 is. So we'd like to know what is v of 1. Well, let's kind of do it like we did before. Whatever v of 1 is, we need to know what value of t will equal 1. If we know that value of t, we can connect the value to w. So that is u of what is equal to 1. Well, when we look down the column for u, we see it's equal to 1 when t is 2. So that means that when we plug in 2 into the w, w of 2 we already know is 4. But we also know that that's going to be v of u of 2. And we see that u of 2 is 1. So that means that v of 1 must be equal to w of 2, which is going to be 4. It's kind of tricky. Let's see if we can figure out See if we can figure out what u of 3 is. Oops, I lost my pen. Let me try that again. If I can get some cooperation, there we go. So we would like to know what is u of 3. So we can connect u of 3 to w of 3. So we know that w of 3 is equal to 0. And we know that w of 3 comes from v of u of 3. So what we want to know, u of 3 is going to have to be that thing that makes v equal to 0. So when we look at that column of v, we see that what makes v equal to 0 is 4. So that means that our u of 3 would have to be 4. So that means our u of 3 is equal to 4. Okay? Now, the next one I think is going to be more straightforward because we got everything else filled in. So w of 4 is going to be v of u of 4. So the u of 4 is 0, and v of 0 is 3. And so we get the final piece of our table. These are tough. You have to get really creative. Think it through and work through it, because like I said, there just aren't very many of these kind of examples.